SMT Nation, we back. Interesting article from Mike Dano of Light Reading. I'll go ahead and link this for you guys to give it a thorough reading. But I do want to highlight a few key elements from the article and see exactly how this pertains to the competitive market that is mobile network operators. All right, T-Mobile, Verizon, AT&T, and now Dish coming into the fold, fiercely competing for network dominance, being able to provide the best network to their customers, attracting customers with said networks. All right, let's see what this is about. Titled, The Quiet Brilliance of T-Mobile's 5G Spectrum Strategy. Okay, let's see if we agree or disagree with the take here. T-Mobile executives always talking about the importance of 5G Spectrum. They have low band, they have mid band. Both of those are actively deployed at large scale. Uh, the millimeter wave piece, they haven't really done much with. And they, for the most part, have neglected it. They really haven't built much. Uh, it says here, the true genius of T-Mobile's network, or excuse me, T-Mobile's spectrum strategy for 5G is now coming into focus. It's a strategy built mostly on spectrum ignored or unwanted by other companies. Um... Okay, <laughs> let's see what this is about here. All right, T-Mobile is poised to gain additional valuable 2.5 gigahertz spectrum for next to nothing. All right, so these are the white space licenses uh, that are being auctioned right now in auction 108 from the FCC. Uh, I think they're in like round 15 currently. It should be wrapping up pretty soon. T-Mobile is facing little to no opposition in the auction. That's true. The demand and supply is like the same. So it's pretty much T-Mobile bidding against T-Mobile. In terms of the low band situation, they just made a huge purchase with Columbia Capital and then some other company, I think Channel 51 license company or something. I forget the the DBA naming for these. Anyways, um, they're spending about $3.5 billion to get what they've been leasing from them. Uh, so that gives them owner economics and keeps it out of the hands of other operators that might be trying to block T-Mobile from owning them. So it was wise to get that. Uh, the only problem is, is had they have just bought this back in 2017, they would have got a better deal on it. They essentially paid double um, per megahertz pop uh, by buying it now versus when it was first auctioned. So that was um, inefficient, and they spent extra money having to deal with it because they couldn't buy it initially. Uh, and then it goes on to talk about the layer cake approach since 2018. They don't do millimeter waves, so it's not really a layer cake. They do low band and mid band. So that's the truth and that's what it is, but they've got 320 million pops covered in the low band 5G, which is the same performance as LTE. Doesn't really do anything uh extraordinary in that respect. And then where T-Mobile really wins is going to be the 5G ultra capacity. They've had 2 years to build out their N41 layer of their network and it's it's pretty fast and it's pretty uniform now, which so I think that's kind of the important piece to what they're doing. Uh, one of the things I found in this article that are completely inaccurate is dynamic spectrum sharing. Uh, Mike Dano holds it as saying that you can't carry your aggregate uh, and DSS together. That's wrong. Um, all carriers except for, actually, they all do this. Um, well, actually, T-Mobile doesn't DSS, but both Verizon and AT&T do DSS and carry your aggregate channels together. So I'm not sure what, what he's talking about here. So there's an inaccuracy there. Uh, anything else that's important to talk about here? Okay, so from renter to owner, all right, we talked about the 600 megahertz piece. Remember, they were also renting the 2.5 gigahertz piece. So, you know, that continues to be an issue. So they've had these two spectrum bands, right? N71, N41, both heavily flawed, both problematic. They've been renting spectrum and leasing spectrum for quite a while now. They're trying to become owners. No other carrier really has these problems. Verizon doesn't rent Spectrum. AT&T doesn't rent Spectrum. Uh, I'm not sure how this article is framed in a positive way. It says here the quiet brilliance of T-Mobile's 5G strategy. I don't see it as brilliance. I see it as they're trying to fix the broken situation of their 5G network. Their 5G network is fragmented in a lot of places. There's bits and pieces of places where they get like 20, 40, 60 megahertz of N41. They're trying to deepen that own 100 to 160 megahertz of it. They're they're trying to clean up the mess that's left behind what the FCC and Sprint have done. I wouldn't call that brilliance. I mean, if they execute it and pull it off, yeah, you could say that they've really done a nice job with it. But uh, I mean, this is, I wouldn't use that terminology. You know, I, I, just, I can't. And then 
ignoring millimeter wave is going to come back to haunt them. There are so many places where T-Mobile has extreme market share. They've grown exponentially. They have a lot of customers and they still have not really adopted, embraced the grind that is millimeter wave. Uh, they are seemingly are trying to avoid it like the plague <laughs> and they have licenses in it. So clearly they understand that they should and need to deploy it, but they just aren't really doing it at scale. Uh, anyways, uh, fixed wireless access, a big piece of what they're doing. Capacity is going to be really important. You know, they're, they're doing the 5G home thing real big. It's growing for them. At some point, to really do a layer cake, they're simply just going to have to fill in all these network gaps and broken pieces of the network, whether it's leasing and buying spectrum or it's building out millimeter wave. This is – outs. I mean, everything – mostly in this article is factual right in discussing the the spectrum holdings and those things but to frame it as a quiet brilliance is that's a reach <laughs> in my estimation uh they're essentially trying to take you know stuff from the junkyard and turn it into into gold and you, you really you you can't really frame it that way um Maybe that's how they look at it, right? They're they're basically taking the leftovers and the bits and pieces of the awful and build something nice, um, and I, and it's respectable. I I I can't I can't look at the T-Mobile network and say this is a quiet brilliance. It, I don't know. It's it's been an absolute mess in the 600 megahertz. It's been an absolute mess in the 2.5 gigahertz. Neither Verizon nor T-Mobile had to deal with any of those things. I guess you could say maybe the the N77 thing for like a couple of months was problematic. I don't know, between like December and January with the FAA. But even that's like nothing, you know. T-Mobile's having to go back and buy more Spectrum. You know, they're having... I, this is just horribly titled. By far the worst title I think Mike Dano has ever produced on an article. <laughs> but it goes to show you everybody's... You know, everybody's drinking the juice and sipping the sauce. Uh, pretty much whatever is written in the media about T-Mobile is viewed as perfection. I mean, I wouldn't go that far. They've they've quickly gone from last to an, a very good competitor, very respectable. I, I support them in that way, uh, but this is just poorly worded and, and not really accurate. And we found some errors in the perceptions of Mike Dano. I don't know. What do you guys think? Sound off in the comment section below. You all the voice of the people, the SMT Nation. Let your voice be heard. Like, share, subscribe for more. Turn on that bell notifications icon to never miss an upload. Oh, I know that the thongs are going to be out after this one. <laughs> Have at it. I don't care. Enjoy your time uh, commenting down below. Uh, by the way, all the stuff going on with the community. Twitter handle, my Gmail address in the description box, uh, and then also my Patreon page. Thanks for watching. See you all in the next one. Peace.